Math Class. This is Professor King with some advice on getting started on your capstone project. I want to first go back for a second and talk to you about the easiest way to get started by looking at your capstone project just as the assignment itself. So I'm going to open the Word document that I've given you for your assignment and I want to walk you through what's in here just so you have an idea of where to get started. So this capstone project for the fall is going to be a very difficult, very rewarding project. That's my hope, right? It's worth 10% of your total class grade. You also can participate if you're the winning sec winning group from your section in a presentation to pilot and then there's a really big prize attached which you all know. I want to point out a couple things. This project is due no later than November 15th before 11.59 p.m. and you must submit the project on Canvas. You do have the option, so if you scroll, you do have the option to turn it in early, but it is in fact due on November 15th before 11.59. If you want to submit a draft, you can do that to me by putting it on a USB drive and giving it to me November 8th in your lab section. I'll be in lab section till 4.30. That's why it says by 4.30. You're welcome to see me in HBB 201 anytime that day and hand me a flash drive if you'd like feedback on your project a week before it's due. I'll take the weekend after November 8th and I will provide feedback back to students on Monday of what I would change, the direction I would go in this project. So you have those two options. You also have to submit a peer review, which we will have details on later. Basically, you can't not participate with your group and expect to receive the same grade as your group. But one thing I do want to point out is in the end, it's graded on your deliverable. So if you have a four person team and one person doesn't contribute, you won't receive a higher grade because someone didn't contribute. You'll be graded on your deliverable, but the person who doesn't choose to participate, I reserve the right to lower their grade. What you're going to do is you're going to get a whole bunch of data in this project and Pilot has been so kind as to provide us with real sales data and real promotional data from their true databases so we have live data. Now here's the thing, there's no one right way to get to this answer. There's no one right answer that's going to fall out of this. It's a process and it is a critical thinking exercise that you're undertaking and that you have to be able to manage. So here's what happens. You're required to answer at least three of the four questions here on this page. Clients ask big questions. These questions came directly from Pilot. They're not from me. So there aren't any step-by-step -step instructions. Pilot wouldn't be asking you these questions if they already knew the answer. Just like in the real world, when you leave, your boss is not going to ask you something that he or she already knows the answer to. There are never step-by-step -step instructions to real problems in business. That's not how business works. So I'm trying to provide a safe learning environment. I'm here. If you have questions, you know where my office is. The GTAs are here. I'm here to help you through this process, but there are no step-by-step -step instructions to get to the answer. There are a hundred different ways to get to the answer, and I'm counting on you to be able to find a good one. But these are the questions that the client is asking. So I want you to read through them, really internalize them, try to understand what question is being asked. We'll take the first one, for example. What's the effect of running Coke or Pepsi in the pictures in an advertisement for each promotion? Does picturing Coke or Pepsi impact the sales of either product? What's the difference in sales when picturing one over the other? So if Coke is in the advertising picture, do we still sell Pepsi at the same rate that we otherwise would? How do you know? What's the difference? You're going to analyze these things. All of these questions are similar to this in their big picture format. The files provided contain the following data. This is what's called it's a miniature version of a data dictionary, but this tells you what the fields are inside these workbooks that I've given you and a description of the data that's in there. So I'm going to walk you through some of the files here in a few minutes. But this is what's in here. So featured beverage on store signage. This is the product on all the signage inside and outside the store. Remember that customers can buy any beverage that's just the promotional one. These are all the different Excel files that are in the data provided to you by Pilot. Some of them are set up the same way. So you'll see the data dictionaries there to walk you through 
what is actually in each file. It doesn't tell you what to do with the files. It just tells you what's in there. Another one thing that I do want to point out is these promo ID files. These files contain the same categories of data. There's a whole bunch of them. They're all the same. But they're CSV files. CSV files, guys, we haven't talked a lot about them, but they're comma separated value files. They don't have formulas. They don't have functions. They don't have formatting. Anything that you put in these files, in these um, promo ID files, is going to be gone as soon as you close it unless you save it as an Excel file. So you can copy the tabs and put them out in an Excel file. You can save them as an Excel file and combine them all into one. I don't care what you do, but just beware if they are CSV files, none of that is captured. So that's why it's here in your instructions. Instructor support says I'll help you with the assignment and I'll help you once you've put it in effort. So make an effort and come and let me know. What are you supposed to give me? Well, you have to give me an executive summary. You have to give me your final Excel file or group of files. Um, and all of it has to go in a zipped folder. It has to go in a zipped folder because you have to upload it to Canvas. If you don't put it in a zipped folder, you can't do that. One person in your group needs to submit it. Each group member will turn in a peer review. No late work is accepted. You all know that. It's a big deal. It's 10% of your grade. There are no exceptions. Please don't ask me for one. It's going to take a long time for your project to upload to Canvas. You must have it uploaded to Canvas on time. If you don't, you will receive a zero, so please keep that in mind. You have to submit what's called a help disclosure. The help disclosure says, I got help from these people on this project. My mom, she works in business. I asked her for some help. I went to this website to see how I could combine these files, to see how I wrote an executive summary. I asked my dad how to write an executive summary. He does this at work. I don't care. Ask whoever you want, but you must disclose it. You must put something in your project that says, we received help from these people. Give me their phone number or whatever. If you receive help from somebody, it must go here. It's not a joke. The assignment itself, this should walk you through what you need. So your executive summary summarizes your findings. It is a Word document or a PDF that tells me your thought process that you went through to answer the question from the client. I should be able to get to your answer from reading this document. Um, it should tell me what you found. It should have a detailed explanation of what's in your file. Any additional data that you want me to have. Remember, when I grade these and I choose a winner and we go to pilot, I'm going to give you feedback on your presentation before I turn you loose at pilot. This is all I have to get me to the way that you thought about this to be able to select you as the winning team and to assign your grade. All I have is your executive summary and your files that you turn in. If you don't provide me with this, your grade is going to be significantly lower. I'm not going to assume that you got here by a miracle, but I'm also not going to make up how you got here, so you've got to tell me. Please include a project workbook that contains your answers to the client questions, so on and so forth. I recommend lots of graphs. Having separate files for each question is acceptable, but must be documented in the executive summary. Basically, your executive summary needs to tell me everything that happened within your workbook. So your spreadsheet model must include the following elements at a minimum. All of these are requirements and must be used to answer the business questions. So somewhere in your workbook, you've got to have all of these things. You've got to have a pivot table, a pivot chart, a nested if, a database function, a lookup. You have to have conditional formatting. You have to have a macro. I haven't taught you how to do a macro yet. They are super easy. You have to have one. My recommendation for the macro is that you do one like we did for the first lab and have a macro to open your workbook. You can have it for whatever you want to flip between your graphs, to undo your filters, whatever you want it to do, but you've got to have one. It's a requirement of the assignment. So again, you have to have a variety of charts. You have to have all of these things in your workbook. I'm not going to tell you where they go. I'm not even going to tell you where I would put them. It is an exercise, again, in your critical thinking and your ability to come to a business answer with this tool that we've spent all semester learning. I have taught you all of the tools. I have tried my best to give you real-life business situations and tell you how you would use them. This is the way this entire class gets all tied together, where you take what you've learned and apply it to a business context. So it says additionally points may be awarded for advanced thinking and Excel functions. Use something I didn't, te I didn't teach you. I'm going to be excited for you. Project grading is based on the accuracy of the data analysis, demonstrated, demonstrated evidence of critical thinking. If you don't write it down, I'm going to assume you didn't do it, so please write it down, and the completeness of the data analysis. Did you consider all the relevant data? 
That's what's in your project document. That's all the guidance that I intend to give you. Save the rest of this video where I show you what's actually in these files. If you have questions, I expect to see you in office hours. I expect to be talking to you during lab. I expect the questions. The questions are necessary. If you wait till this assignment is due, you will not do well. You must get started pretty quickly. So let's take a look now at the stuff that Pilot has given you. So here, this is the data that Pilot has given us and you've downloaded it from Canvas and it looks a lot like this. So we have all of these different workbooks. Your job is to figure out how to put all of this stuff together. My job right now is to tell you what's actually in here. So I'm gonna use the sales data, the grocery cooler sales data. I'm not gonna use the units. This units data and this sales data are the same data. One is just in dollars and one is in units. I'm an accountant, I'm gonna use dollars. It does not matter to me which one you use. It does not matter to the client which one you use. It's the same data. We can get from one answer to the other. It doesn't matter which one you use. But if you open up either file, this is what it looks like. It's going to have an operational division. It's going to have UPC numbers down this side. And it's going to have a variety of dates. So these are the fiscal weeks. These are the dates that these sales occurred in. So for this particular division, for this particular UPC code, in this week they sold $2. So on and so forth. There's a lot of blank data. This workbook is huge as I continue to scroll to show you. There are multiple divisions, multiple UPC codes. The data goes on and on forever. So this is just an example of when we've talked all semester about big workbooks. I understand you can look down through the data and find the answer. You can't look down through the data and find the answer now. There are thousands of rows of data. As a matter of fact, let's see how many there are. There are 51,804 rows of this data. You can't get there. You can't figure all of that out and look through that data to find the answer. You're going to have to depend on your skills to get you where you need to be. So I just want to show you that. So here's the what I would do. If I were getting started in this, this is a cross tab of all of the sales for all of these items. My first question is, what in the world is this item? So how do you figure that out? Before I answer that, let me tell you one more thing about this. These are the sales for the entire store for pilot as a whole, right? These are the sales regardless of whether or not they are related to the promotion. So this product may or may not be related to the promotion, but this is the total sales for this product on this in this given week. It doesn't have anything to do with the promotion, but this is where you would find out if the promotion stuff actually helps sales or not because these are the total sales for the week whether or not the promotion was being run. This is the data as a whole, so hopefully that makes sense. These red numbers mean, simply mean something was returned. So if something was returned, it's in red. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but that's what it means. So this we have this file, and we have this UPC code here that says what in the world is this UPC code. So I'm going to minimize that for a second, and I'm going to show you this all UPC descriptions workbook. It's going to take it a minute to open. These are big files. I understand. But here are the UPCs, the description the brand and the manufacturer of all of these UPCs. So where I would start, and again, if I hit command shift down, there are a lot of them, there are 18,000, right? If I were trying to get started, I would use a lookup function, a VLOOKUP, an HLOOKUP, an index match, some kind of lookup function. I would copy this tab into the other workbook and then I would run a VLOOKUP and I would make it tell me the item description, the brand and the manufacturer, and I would make it show me those things in this workbook so that I wasn't constantly having to flip back and forth. I would insert columns here, make it look it up for me so that I knew what I was looking at. Then I can subtotal by division, I can subtotal by manufacturer, I can subtotal by product. I can do all kinds of things. I can start creating these pivot tables which will be very, very helpful as we move through. So I would find a way to combine those. Again, you can use sales or you can use units, it doesn't matter. This 2017-2018 Thungry schedule is just what it says. So this schedule is going to tell you the months. It's going to tell you the promo ID. And the promo ID is going to match, if I expand this, you'll notice I have promo ID 13798, 13798. That's going to be this promotion where Coke was on the sign. This is the start date and the end date. And this is the promotion. So buy the drink, get the jerky, buy one, get one free. 
Coke was on the sign. So how did that impact the sale of Coke? So I have all of these promotion IDs and I have all of these promo ID files to back it up. I'm going to open this promo ID file for this particular, these particular months where there's Coke on this sign. I'm just going to open this one. Remember, this one is a CSV file. Anything I put in this promotional file, uh, no, I don't care. Stop. I don't want to open it in Excel. I don't want to open it in numbers. Hold on. Open with Microsoft Excel. If your Mac does something crazy, please open it in Excel. And it says some features might be lost if you save this workbook as a CSV file to preserve its features. Save it in an Excel format. That's what I was trying to tell you. So here we run into the same data that we had a minute ago. This is the promotion. This is the fiscal week. And you remember that all of this stuff is also over here in the sales. So we have UPC, we have fiscal week, we have division, we have all the stuff, right? All of that, oh, that's not the button I meant to push. All of that in both files. So if I go back to this one, this uh, 13798 file, I have the week, I have the promotion, I have the division, I have the UPC. Again, I could VLOOKUP, hard VLOOKUP, this UPC data in here, so I would know. These sales here, instead of being for the entire company, are the sales related to these UPCs based on the promotion. So only if a customer took part in the promotion, only if they bought a beverage and then purchased the jerky, buy one, get one, do the sales appear here. So the sales numbers in this workbook are not going to match the sales numbers in this workbook. And the difference between the two is going to tell you how much the promotion impacts. So as you can see, all of these files, they tie together. They all have common threads. They all have promo IDs or years or um, UPC codes. You have to figure out a way, logically, to get them all tied together. And the way that you figure that out is to sit down with a pencil and paper and map out what you need to do. What are your goals? What are the small questions you're going to ask so you can get to the big questions? How are you going to get them all together? How are you going to combine all of these into a workbook that is usable? How are you going to share it with one another? On that subject, you will notice in your Canvas page you have the ability to upload and download files from Canvas. That would be how I would go about sharing this. I wouldn't stick this in Google Docs. The moment you do, you lose the ability to do a macro and a pivot table. So don't do that. Try to work on it as a group. Your brain power is going to thank you. Try to work on it in person. It's going to greatly enhance the usefulness of the project. It's going to greatly enhance the critical thinking that can go on. Do yourself a favor. Be in the room together. Hopefully this helps you get started. I know it's not a lot of direction, but remember it's not a lot of direction on purpose. If you need me, my office is in Stokely Management Center, Office 639. Come and see me. Send me an email. I'm here to help. Good luck.